Hello, welcome to a different lesson. Thank you for deciding to watch this video. This is our third um, video on the series, Mass No Medication for the NCLEX. Um, for this time around, I've decided to um, focus on prioritization. What is the most prioritized information on this medication? As uh, sneaking a little bit of a select order apply, but I have five questions, very important. And then um, talk about prioritization issues about this medication. So let's get to it, and I hope you get something out of it. Before that, um, join us every Saturday um, for just um, a close review. Um, that's the Zoom link and the password is free of charge, and you are welcome anytime. So we have five drugs. We have a clopidogrel, a miodron, lencinopril, uh, adenosine and digoxin. So today we're just focusing on uh, cardio farm, which you have to know very well. And that will be focusing on mostly uh, in prioritization. So we have a four, we have five questions. The first one, a nurse is caring for four patients. Which of the following need priority intervention? Um, so um, in a adult endless way, uh, whenever we see need priority intervention, or immediate first, anything like that, uh, we talk about prioritization. And when we talk about prioritization, we're talking about being sharp. So check my B sharp um, video on the channel that is linked below. Uh, it's very important you learn how to prioritize patients. All this B sharp means is you are being careful and paying attention to things that will kill the patient. You no, know, every symptom is a priority because you're looking for the one that will kill. There's some that is expected, there's some that is not, um, but there's some that you have to pay more attention to as your priority. And that's the one we put on the Bishop chat. So um, check that one out and you know more about it. Or visit my channel and you can talk, you can see more videos about it. So, um, what is the priority intervention? Read the question backward. This is how we answer question, adopt endless way. Which of the following need priority intervention? So I need to intervene. I have four patients. Okay. A client on prodigal with a platelet of 170. You have to know what is this. This is a, a pharmacology, the way to uh, be able to ace your pharmacology on the endless is to know, know how they usually ask the question. They will tell you what the medication is and what it's used for. Or they don't tell you, and they want you to figure out what they the name of the medication and the side, side effect. And uh, clopidogrel is antiplatelet. So antiplatelet is against platelets. And it is one of the medications we gave is in the same group as aspirin, but different, they do different mechanisms. They all inhibit uh, platelets, so they cause bleeding. Uh, when they prevent um, platelet aggregation. And therefore, if you're on this medication, you teach the patient bleeding precautions. Um, when the platelet is low, it's a problem. You expect something that inhibit platelet to lower the platelet. Um, 170 is okay. It's not that. 170,000 is okay. So that's not that bad. Anything less than 150,000, yeah, you start worrying. Um, 100,000 is the worst. So 100,000, of course, that's bad. 150, yeah, your antenna should be going up. And 170,000, um, it's okay. So I don't need to uh, intervene in this situation. A client on amiodarone with elevated TSH. You have to know what amiodarone is. You have to know the side effect. The way I do amiodarone is I call it P-clone. So if you're on amiodarone, you are going to be p cloned. That means you have these symptoms, pulmonary fibrosis. That is normal one. Normal, uh, then normal two is cardiac toxicity, where you have QT prolongation. So those are the ones you should worry about on amiodarone. The rest of them, not that too much. L is the LFT, so your LFT goes up. So you just need to check it and make sure it's okay. Well, or is they have the ocular division issue that is the ophthalmologist for, and is they have peripheral neuropathy, which is not that important. Okay, E, so P clone E, they have endocrine problem, their TSH, 
goes up or go down. That's not important. And then and the D, the skin, they have blue, gray, gray skin. That's still not important. But they are symptoms that you should worry about. When we say they are not important, it's for your test. That's not a priority action. Um, the most prioritized is uh, um, pulmonary fibrosis and acute prolongation or heart block from that. So a client or a mutant with the elevated TSH, which is the E portion of it, yeah, it's bad, but we gotta make sure we're following and doing checking um via TSH and making sure it's getting better. So that's not important. A client on Lensinopro with potassium of this. You know, Lensinopro, the signs of symptoms is this ACE. They have angioedema, which is number one. Two is cough, which is also bad, but not that bad. Usually it's a nagging cough that you, the patient reports and you change the medication to probably ARB, but it's not number one, it's angioedema. And three is electrolyte today because it's a hyperkalemia, okay? And then I is a teratogenic. So whoever is on it, you need to make sure they don't get pregnant because the baby will have... Uh, birth defect. So a client on lensinopro with the potassium 3.6 is low normal. Lensinopro is going to increase it, so I'm not worried about it. A client on digoxin and nausea. Digoxin is a medication that they usually ask narrow therapeutic in this. Any GI symptoms on the patient taking digoxin is a priority. There's other symptoms, the cardiac toxicity, kidney problem, things you need to avoid. But if you don't know anything about digoxin, number one is GI symptoms, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. You have to worry. That's signs of toxicity, so you have to intervene. So priority action, anybody who needs priority action is this patient. So that's the first patient we intervene. Okay, next question. And this is caring for the same question stem for patients, which of the following statements need immediate intervention? The same thing. Which statement need immediate intervention? I'm on these four. So, patient is completely uh, grow, I will stop my medication seven days before surgery. That's a good idea. Platelet, usually when you inhibit platelet like aspirin, and clopidogrel, they inhibit platelets for seven days. So they don't allow platelet to work for seven days. So you teach the patient to stop their medication five to seven days. So that's a good idea. So we don't need to intervene. Amiodron. I will call my PCP for numbness and pain in the hand and the feet. This is peripheral neuropathy. That is not important. You don't need to call. You need to follow up and we'll take care of it. So you don't need to call. The question say immediately. That's no, it doesn't need immediate intervention. Lensinopro, I've bought a new shirt due to my neck size. Yeah, this is a problem. The patient neck is getting bigger. Neck is getting bigger. Why would I take Lensinopro and your neck is getting bigger? This is what B sharp is. Something that does not make sense. You worry about, this is not something I expect. Oh. This is like way too much. I mean, why will your neck get bigger? Why are you taking lensinopro? Well, it's developing angioedema. The neck and muscles are getting edema and getting swollen and swollen. The hairway will collapse. We need to intervene. A client on digoxin, I will avoid low potassium. Some of the things you should avoid when you're on digoxin is low potassium, high calcium, and low magnesium. Tell the patient to maintain all these electrolytes normal. Some people get confused. When you see a question, they said increase potassium, wrong. Decrease calcium, wrong. Increase magnesium, wrong. What you need to tell the patient, maintain them to normal level. So I will avoid low, low potassium is good. So avoid low potassium as much as possible. That means you, um, you're making sure the level is normal. 
So once again, patient on digoxin, I will avoid low potassium as much as possible. Yes, whenever somebody is in um, digoxin, tell them to avoid low potassium, avoid high calcium, avoid low magnesium as much as possible. And you teach them to make sure they maintain their potassium really normal, their calcium really normal, and magnesium really normal. So they should avoid them from going down, they should avoid it from going up. But just make sure the level is normal. So this, you don't need to intervene. Okay, next one. And next is caring for four clients who needs immediate priority intervention. The same thing. A client on clopidogrel and a black tire stool. I told you clopidogrel in with platelets and bleeding precaution. Black tire stool, that means they're bleeding. This is upper GI bleed, bleeding from their stomach. That is no normal. That's hemorrhage. They're hemorrhaging. So we got to see this patient. A client on amiodaron and AST of this, that is LFT goes up. So there's three uh, T's that you need to worry about amiodarone, some lab work. We have LFTs, we have TSH, and we have PFT, primary function test. Among all this is the status problem. That is long issue. So the yeah, LFTs is elevated. It's not that important. We need to check it and monitor it, but that's not never a priority uh, for your test. The priority one is pulmonary function test. So um, this, we got to follow up on it. A client on lensinopril and creatinine on 1.5. One of the side effects of lensinopril is transient, transient elevation of your creatinine. Uh, but this will get better. So that's not a problem. 1.5 is not that too high. A client adult on digoxin and apical pulse of 64. You have to know this. When somebody on digoxin, you need to check their apical pulse for one full minute. If they are adult, you hold it if it's less than 60. If it's a child, you hold it when it's less than 70. If it's a new neonate, you hold it when it's less than 90. 64 is greater than 60. Therefore, we don't need to intervene. So number one is the right answer. Number four. Now we get to some setup. Select all that apply. Select all that apply. Which of the following need immediate intervention? You see, I'm reading from backward. A client is caring for four clients. Uh, a nurse is caring for four clients. Which of the following need immediate priority intervention? Not just any intervention, but priority intervention. Select or that apply. So we got to make sure it's a priority problem and we select him more than one answer choice. Adapt and clear way. Read it backward and then find the problem. You're asked the case, buzzwords. So the buzzwords is priority for client immediate intervention. Select or that apply. A client on clopidogrel and astaminophen for pain. We talk about it, this is in bit platelets and they have bleeding problem. So we want to avoid bleeding as much as possible. If they're taking acetaminophen for pain, it's very important. If they take NSAID, yeah, wrong. I want them to take acetaminophen uh, for pain so that they don't have any bleeding issue. Therefore, this is fine. A client on amiodarone and no productive cough for three months, yes. This is a cough. It's non-productive. This is due to fibrosis of the lung. So they have pulmonary fibrosis. This is a problem. That's what we do, the PFTs. Number one problem of abiodron, if you have it, among the P clone, I call it P clone, is if you're on amiodron and you have P, you'll be cloned. That means you're dead. Your mommy have to give you another baby. So you are cloned to death. So P cloned, that means pulmonary fibrosis is a deadly symptoms. So this patient, we have to see. The client on lensinopril and spinolactone. What is lensinopril? We talk about it, increase your potassium. 
When they give you something like that, just find the correlationship between them. Lansinopril, you know, increase K. Phenolactone, spare K. So they also increase K. I can't combine two Ks. That's hyperkalemia. That's a problem. A client on digoxin and yellow grain vision. Yeah, these are another signs of toxicity. GI, bleed, GI symptoms and yellow grain vision is a problem. You need to intervene. They are having uh, toxicity signs. So three, you know, B, C, D are priority intervention. You have to uh, intervene, select or apply question. And lastly, I save I mean, uh, adenosine. I think the best way for this one is to make it is select or apply uh, by also sneaking a priority action um, I do not see. So, what is the question? Select or that apply. Which of the following are a priority action by the nurse? A client was found to be in SBT without symptoms, so the patient did not have any symptoms. I did not see was ordered for treatment. Which of the following are priority intervention? So, you have a patient who has supraventricular tachycardia and has no symptoms. What actions will you take? So, usually, when somebody doesn't have as have SVT without symptoms, you do some big old maneuver, let them blow into a bag, bear down. If that doesn't help, you try. If it's a kid, you put a ice in, in, on the face. If it doesn't help, then you, what you do is give them medication. You give them adenosine. You start with six milligram, and you give it to them. If they don't improve, uh, you go to 12 milligram. If they don't improve, you go to synchronized cardio version. If you give them one of this and they have symptoms, you go to cardio version directly. If they have symptoms from the beginning, you give them cardio version, um, synchronized cardio version immediately. So these are the things you need to know about uh, adenosine. So I put it there. It's one of the cardiac medication, very powerful. We use it for SVT. It's very good. That's the treatment of choice for SVT. So administer six milligram at first dose. Yes, the first dose is always six milligram. So this is good. Inject it into the anticubital vein. Why? Anticubital vein is closer to your heart. So you want to inject it to not in the other way to your hand, something above closer to your heart. So in the anticubital, anticubital vein um, is closer to your heart. Um, so any vein closer to your heart is if they put close to your heart as much as possible, yeah, that's the best choice. Don't put it all the way down in your hand. You want to place it, uh, inject it close to the um, the heart. So this is very good. Expect brief period of asystole. Yeah, tell the patient, uh, the heart is going to stop. So you got to let them know. So expect, and you have to know that. You see the monitor and you see a flat line that is expected of uh, adenosine. Give over one to two seconds, followed by 20 ml of saline flush. What is this? This is IV push. We give adenosine by IV push. Never give it by drip or piggyback. That's a wrong answer. You have to give it IV push. You slam it in and stop the heart, and then the heart resets itself to break the SVT. That's why you inject it through the anticubital vein close to the heart as much as possible. So one to two seconds is the fastest you can give medication. And then you slam in with the 20 cc of saline. You're flushing everything in. So that's the best way to inject it. So this is good. Inform client about brief flushing of the skin. Yeah, you let them know it's a vasodilator. It will dilate the vessels and then they, their face will Will, will flush. That is an expected finding. So you let them know that flushing is common when the patient will get adenosine. Give a second dose, 12 milligram, if patient becomes hypotensive. Hypotension, diaphoresis, change in mental status are all symptoms. If patient becomes symptom, symptomatic, you need to go into synchronized cardio version immediately, no more 12 milligram. Therefore, this is wrong. So A, B, C, D, E is the 
priority intervention. And so thank you for joining us. Five cardio medication that you have to know at the fingertips. And I hope I made it clear as much as possible. Follow us um, on this um, channel for this series. Um, and then good luck in your exams and all the best of luck. Like I said, follow us more and subscribe to get more of this um, content. Thank you very much and all the best of luck.